Hey everyone, today I'm going to showcase all the Keyblades in Kingdom Hearts 3 and talk about them a little bit. This is a follow up to my previous Keyblade videos for Cage 1 and 2, so it'll work in a similar fashion. This time I'm going to let the visuals do most of the talking and add a few observations and opinions alongside them, not too many. I'm going to try and tone myself down a bit. Just be aware that opinions are opinions, nobody has to agree. Just don't go trying to invalidate them, okay? I've had quite enough of that. Keychains for Sora's Keyblade in Cage 3 are a big deal. They're a core part of the gameplay due to a few new features this time around. We have the usual strength and magic stats, but these can actually be changed through the Keyblade upgrade system. As the levels increase, the strength and magic will get higher and higher. New abilities will also unlock for the Keyblade. Each one will have two or three of these abilities. Some Keyblades are given to you already upgraded to a degree. For example, Wheel of Fate starts at level 3 as you get it quite late into the game. But if you start a new game with the Keyblade Carryover feature, they'll all revert to base level. For the descriptions on screen, I'll list the minimum and maximum strength and magic stats. Then of course there's a new form change system. Each Keyblade has one or two form changes. Most of these will turn the Keyblade into a different weapon type, such as a pair of guns or a hammer. Some of them will remain as Keyblades, but still change Sora's form. There's a selection of forms that apply to different Keyblades, and I'll highlight the form change a certain colour to represent which form it sends Sora into. Red is for Strike Form, which gives Sora attack and power based abilities. Then there's Blue for Element Form, naturally this is magic based. Yellow for Guardian Form, that's all about defensive capabilities. And finally Green for Blitz Form, giving Sora better movement while he's in the form. There's others like Second Form, Ultimate Form, they're more unique so they'll just be in white. Final couple of points, in Cage 3 you can switch between three Keyblades on the fly, even in combat. This allows for some cool mixing and matching during your attacks. And each Keyblade has a set of shot locks attached to it. I'll list the names of these too on each description. Alright, that's enough exposition. I'm starting to feel like an old sorcerer already. Let's begin the showcase. Okay, of course we have to start with the humble and classic Kingdom Key. Not much to look at here, I've already talked about this Keyblade twice. But it is a good showcase of the new engine and the new Kingdom Shader and it being a much more modern game than Cage 1 and 2, we can see actual proper shine on it. We can see it looks a bit more metal. With this newer game, I think the look and the feel of the Keyblades and the weapons in general, I think sometimes it works in their favour and sometimes it doesn't. I think some of them can end up looking kind of plasticky. Maybe you could say that about the Kingdom Key, but I think it's done alright here. I do like the black grip. I like how that looks. Oh, and I'll just say the token is back to being sort of 3D, like three little balls, rather than Cage 2 where it's flat. So it's more like the first game. That's nice to see as well. Oh, and I guess I can just run over what the stats mean here, just so you know for the other Keyblades that come after this. We have the Strength and the Magic stats, the Min and the Max ones there. Then we have the abilities they can get. Uh, these come through the levels, like I said. So it depends which level. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three. A lot of them have Form Change Extender. Like that's a bit of a go-to that they just stick in there. That's a bit of a filler thing, I guess. Just, there you go, Form Change Extender. Then we have Second Form. That's white because it's just Second Form. And yeah, Second Form just makes Sora go into his Cage 2 outfit. And he has abilities from Cage 1 and 2. And then we have the Shot Locks, King of Hearts and Ragnarok. One of these, the first Shot Lock, will be when you just hold it down but not all the way. The Shot Lock button. And then the second will be when you hold it down all the way, it will do the full Shot Lock, right? And that's it. So as far as showing the hit effects, I'm not going to talk over them. Because last time I was like, oh look, there's these types of stars and this happens. And it's really pointless. I'm sure you guys have eyes if you're watching this video so you can see what's happening. So I'm just going to show it slowed down. Here it is for Kingdom Key. So before I move on to Sora's other keychains, I want to just mention the keyblades of other characters in this game. There's a lot, you know, this is Kingdom Hearts 3, a lot of characters came together. I could talk about Terra's keyblade, I could talk about Aqua, I could talk about Xehanots, but I'm not going to because they were introduced in BBS, and just in case I do make a BBS video, I'd rather talk about them there, rather than just do it here and then repeat myself, but for an older version and that, right? So I'm not going to bother talking about those or showing those. I'm only going to talk about the two new ones that characters got in this game. And the first of those is Braveheart. This is Riku's new Keyblade. This is a plus five plus five and in Remind he can use a shot lock and that's Dark Divide. And Braveheart, it's a bit like Fenrir from Cage 2. It's a new kind of key, right? It's a modern style. It's a pin and tumble lock style, which yeah, is a little bit odd to see in Kingdom Hearts still. I think Fenrir was a bit better looking, only because this one's 
I don't know, it's a little a little boring, maybe. I mean, I don't mind the sort of keeping it very consistent, keeping it grey and black, and that's cool. But it, I think with Unreal Engine, and I think with the Kingdom Shader and everything, it does end up looking like a giant oversized toy <laughs> sort of thing. I don't know, it's, it's maybe a little plasticky. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's okay. Uh, but I just think it's a bit more boring than what I had before with Way to Dawn, right? So. But it's not the worst thing ever. And the Braveheart name comes from Final Fantasy because of course it does. <laughs> this is Kingdom Hearts. Uh, there's a lot of that and I, I don't need to go through every single one that's a reference to Final Fantasy, especially since I'm not an expert. Oh, and uh, you may have noticed this looking at it, but on each side there's 13 dots. You see, count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, of course there are. The other new Keyblade in this game is Star Cluster. This is Mickey's new Keyblade. It's a mix between Kingdom Key D and the old Star Seeker they had, so it's a mix of his two previous Keyblades. And it looks like a mix of the two, you can see the Kingdom Key shape. It's got the stars and the blue from Star Seeker. All in all, uh, I'm not a huge fan of this one, I mean it's alright. I just, uh, it's a weird fusion. The reason I'm listing it now is because there's a couple of recolors of this for Sora's Keyblades, so it made sense to do this first. I just think maybe it's a little bit busy on the details, but it is okay. I guess uh, it's small enough on Mickey that I don't really have to look at it too much. And uh, well, one of its recolors is uh, worse looking, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Huh? Okay, back to Sora's keychains. Let's start off with Hero's Origin. Uh, we've had a lot of Olympus Keyblades in the series, and Hero's Origin does take some cues from previous ones. So we've got the guard having the clouds and the pillars on it, just like we had previously. Uh, it's got purple pillars, I don't really approve of those, <laughs> just because it's a colour that I'd rather it wasn't there. But otherwise, I actually do like the look of this Keyblade. I'm not sure it's popular with the people, I don't know if people really like it because maybe it's a bit much. But I like the jagged blade of it, and the Zeus on top is actually kind of cool. I don't know, I actually do enjoy the blade of this Keyblade. It's more the guard that I don't like as much, but like you've got the Olympus Stone again, of course that's there. And Zeus with his lightning bolt, and it does look very Greek. So yeah, I like it. And then, of course, we've got to talk about the form change. We'll talk about what weapon it turns into. This one's a guardian form, and it turns into counter shield. And I think this is cool, because we actually get to use a shield. And you know, we've used a shield, like, in the Awakening and so, uh, things like that. But actually using a shield with its own moveset, and then the whole mechanic of blocking and absorbing the attacks and then sending them back. That's really cool. I don't want to talk too much about mechanics and that sort of thing. But I just thought I'd show the weapons a bit as well after this bit. Show the alternate transformed weapons. And there's Counter Shield. Thank God for photo mode, by the way. Right, well, the endless parade of star-themed keyblades continues with Shooting Star. This is a magic-based keyblade, as you probably would expect. And it looks alright. Actually, no, I do like it. I like the shape. The curvy shape is quite nice. And also, if you look closely, it's very textured. It's got a... and I think a lot of the weapons have this. But it's got this... Oh, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not a texture expert. But it looks like it'd have a sort of rough feel. Not on the handle, which is good. But it's on the blade itself. And I like that. And yeah, you've got some effects with the star. Like glittery effect. If it was me, maybe I would... Uh, maybe those colours are a little contrasting, I would maybe just keep it blue rather than have that purple in there. But that is probably just me because I do like a simpler colour scheme. But this one doesn't go too extravagant or anything, right? It still looks good, I think. And the shape is quite unique, which I appreciate. You may notice that this keyboard has three shot locks. The only ones that have this are this one and Honey Launcher, which is the same transformation. The reason for that is because it has a different shot lock where you go above the enemies, so it depends on your positioning. And then the final shot lock is the usual fill the circle to max. So that's a little different. And then the transformation, I think it's one of the coolest transformations personally because it turns into a couple of guns and a giant launcher as well. The guns carry on that textured appearance and, and yeah, they just look like a couple of rather abstract, maybe a little bit cartoony, but it's Kingdom Hearts pistols. And then we have the big magic launcher as well, which looks like a, well, a magical rocket launcher. I really love this thing. Man, just look at it. It's so big. It's such a big weapon. It just feels like it does some damage and you fire these huge shots out of it. And, ah, uh, yeah, the transforms are my favorite part of Cage 3's combat. I do have some issues with some of the combat, but the transforms, I think, are really good. And I hope they continue that into another game because I think it's one of the best things they added. All 
All right, next up is favorite deputy. This used to be called Infinity Badge. I think honestly that's a better name because that better suits what this is, right? It's a mix between Woody and Buzz's styles. So Infinity for Buzz and Badge for Woody makes sense, but instead it's favorite deputy, which is just referencing Woody. But at least on the Keyblade itself, you can see both of them being referenced. So the blade is Woody, it's a cactus, it's got his hat, it's got a scarf, it's got a rope, a lasso, and it's got the badge. And then the guard is Buzz with the spaceship design and his wings, and you've got the little alien as the token. Now, how does it look? I mean, it fits what it's trying to do perfectly, right? It's trying to be a mix between the two, and it's trying to be a Keyblade for a toy world, and it looks like a toy. I just think it looks very ugly, but it's not like it's doing bad at its job. It's you know, well designed in that way, I just don't like how it looks generally. I mean, if you mash two toy themes together, it's probably going to look kind of ugly, right? That's kind of the point. Still, regardless of how much it makes sense, it still looks ugly. I don't really like the look of it. I don't really like how to look at it. It's a bit annoying when I had to use it for Lucky Strike. Thankfully, another Keyblade came in with Lucky Strike. I can use that now. But that's just how it is. I mean, yeah, look, it's just... There's a lot going on. Maybe a little over-detailed, a little over-designed. Now, we also have the form changes for this. I actually prefer these in terms of look. They're a bit more on the buzz side of things, so you can see there's still the cactus there for the hammer and the badge. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think they come together a little better, maybe because it's on a bigger thing, so it doesn't feel as crowded. And the drill as well. The drill's pretty cool, too. I mean, it straight up just looks like a rocket ship, so <laughs> there is that. Next up then is Ever After, this is the Tangled Keyblade, if you can tell from how it looks. Yeah, let's just run through all the details of this quickly. It's the tower, of course, Rapunzel's tower. There's a hair going down the blade. There's the sun, that's the uh, symbol of the kingdom. Then you have some flowers on the bottom, of course. And then you have a braid of her hair and a frying pan. There we go, <laughs> it's a Tangled Keyblade. How does it look? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's okay, it's all right. I think maybe it's got too many colors as usual. That's KH3 Keyblades though, a lot of these Disney Keyblades. They tried to stuff as many bits of the world in there as they could, I think. They really tried to put all these little references, which I think is admirable. Uh, just maybe it's a bit much for some of them. Although I don't mind this one because it still keeps a simple sort of shape, which offsets some of the high amount of different details in there. I mean, let, let me get this straight now before anyone sort of misunderstands me. There's nothing wrong with detail. Having detail is good. It's when you have a lot of different design elements that can feel a bit over-designed and a bit clustered and just a bit too much. I think you know what I mean. But I'm not going to rant on about it. Anyway, you've got the transformation. There's only one for this, but it's the staff. And I really love this transformation. I think it's so unique and it's really cool. I love shooting with the clones. It's great, but it looks cool as well. There's a gradient thing going on with the green and yellow, which was also on the Keyblade, but the handle elements with the flowers and stuff has kind of become the end of it, the end of the staff, whereas the blade of the Keyblade is now the handle of the staff. So that's a cooler inversion. And if you look into the flower, you can see some pulsing effects. That's cool. Honestly, that's going to be a bit of a broken record today because that's how I feel about a lot of these KS3 Keyblades. Here's another one! Happy Gear. This one actually I have warmed up to a bit, right? At first when I saw it, I thought, okay, this is, this is pretty silly. This is a bit nonsense. But I do like the machinery parts of it. And it is Monsters, Inc. It's Disney, you know, it's not going to be very serious. Especially since they're in a sort of laughter phase of the factory. If they're in the scream phase of the factory, maybe it'll look a little different. In fact, I might like that a bit more. But uh, yeah, it's got all the elements. It's got the factory stuff. It's got the hat. It's got the door. It's got the scream tanks. Hey, it's all there. It's pretty cool. I've warmed up to it a bit, actually. I don't think it's too bad. I think when you look at it close up like this, maybe it seems over-designed. But from further away, I think it blends a bit better. And it doesn't have too many colors or anything like that. So yeah, you know, not too bad. And when we look at the transforms, well, we have two, we have Agile Claws. I like the segmented look of this and how Sora's hands actually go into them. That's pretty nice. And we also have the yo-yos, which <laughs> they really are just yo-yos. Some people got these, uh, I think it was a European thing, a promotional thing, if you've got the game in a pre-order or something. But yes, they're okay, they're yo-yos. I mean, that's quite inventive for a weapon, using yo-yos to hit people. <laughs> I've never seen it before. 
So I gotta applaud some inventiveness with that. All right, moving on to Crystal Snow, the Arendelle themed Keyblade. It's quite simple actually, and a bit of a twist from the others. It's mostly just her Ice Palace with some snowflakes. And then at the bottom there's Olaf and a little sort of frosted branch thing. And I think it's uh, quite a nice design. The only thing I don't really like about it are the little snowflakes on the blade, because they kind of feel like they're just kind of stuck there. So maybe that could have been done a little differently. But overall, I do like this. This is one of my preferred Keyblades in this game, for the visuals at least. And its transformations are... Well, we got Blizzard Claws, so we got another set of claws. Uh, these ones are pretty cool. <laughs> Get cool. Uh, but I do like the effect when you move around. You can see the glimmer of the ice. You can see the reflections. Quite nice. And then we have Blizzard Blades. These are very nice as well because we have these blades on his wrists. You can see they're on loops there. And also on his ankles as well. So that's quite unique, and it's another cool weapon. Like, there's not a whole lot I can say about it, because it's mostly just blue ice. But it is nice blue ice. Mm. Next up is Honey Spout. This you get from 100 Acre Wood. Ah, uh, Honey Spout... <laughs> okay, so, I don't really like it, but that's not to say it's bad because I actually think the design is pretty decent. It's a short keyblade, you know, uh, you may have watched the Cage 1 video, I don't really like short keyblades. And it's a bunch of honey pots stacked up. And it's, well, it looks like it's made of wood and it's got the bees. It's a hundred acre wood keyblade. <laughs> it's just, I don't like that style of things. But I could see why some people would quite like it, especially if you're a fan of Winnie the Pooh. This one is like Shooting Star, so it's got three shot logs and it's got the same transformations, just in a honey theme instead. And actually it can slow enemies, because the honey, I guess, sticks to them and slows them down, which is quite neat. I really like the visuals of when you shoot with this, especially in Arendelle. The yellow contrasted with the blue looks very nice. But yeah, the guns and the launcher, they're like Shooting Star, but just honey versions. And a bit differently shaped, I mean, yeah, honey's pretty nice. I like honey. I like the flowing texture that it has as well. So, they're decent enough. They're just very wacky looking. Mm, I don't know if it's intentional, but I kind of like how on the honey launcher, the big one, part of the end of it looks a bit like a crown. Uh, if it's intentional or not, it's still kind of cool, I like that bit. Alright, then we have Nano Gear. This one is the Big Hero 6 Keyblade, so you can see all the design elements on this. We got Baymax's token for the uh, well, the token, some Kemballs, got Baymax style wings and all of that, uh, and then the face is um, something to do with Hero's brother. I can't quite remember right now, but uh, yeah, you'll know if you know. <laughs> and then the blade itself, more Baymax looking stuff, and then we have the microbots on the end. And yeah, uh, the blade is good. I don't really like the guard, to be honest. I think that's a bit messy. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, the guard, it's just a lot of colours. But the blade is quite nice, especially the microbots. And then when we get into the transformation of this, it borrows elements from other transformations from other Keyblades into its own combo, which is very cool. That's why I'm showing like a whole bunch of different stuff here. The microbots can become different weapons. So you see there's the hammer, you can see there's claws, there's yo-yos essentially, and then there's a big fist as well, if you want to fist some heartless. So <laughs> that's really nice. I think it's quite a cool combo and the fact that he's just holding a bunch of microbots I like that as well also there's a sword you can see the front one is a sword so <laughs> yeah you know that's pretty good to transform oh here it is my favorite keyblade in cage 3 wheel of fate I love this keyblade guys just look at it right so obviously it's a ship's wheel it's made of wood you can see the wood texture it's got ship rigging it's got sails although they're down the guard of it has got jack's compass you see the top of jack's compass and then the skull with the bandana and then also the guard is meant to look like davy jones's chest right the dead man's chest and the key to the chest is the token and there's a few skulls there as well it's a really lovely looking keyblade in my opinion i don't know if everyone likes it Maybe the rigging could pick people off, I could kind of understand that. You could probably do away with the rigging and it would still look good. 
Uh, maybe that makes it a bit too wide, but I don't mind it. It just, it keeps consistent. This is what I love about it. It keeps consistent between the guard and the blade. And the colours are quite muted, which is good for me personally. But, you know, little elements of gold and punctuations of red and white for the key in the skulls. It's just great. It's my favourite keyblade in this game. Even above Oblivion, and we'll get to that later. And then if that wasn't enough, the transformations look so cool as well. You first have this spear, high wind. I guess it's a spear, or I don't know what weapon it is. I'm no expert in weapon types. We've got so many different names for things to kill each other with. But yeah, like the compass is at the end, at the blade. Where's the wheel around it. I really like the point of the blade as well. And then other parts of the Caribbean themed elements. And I really like parts of the Caribbean. Well, I mean, I like the first three of them. <laughs> I just pretend four and five don't exist most of the time. But we had a kind of eh, we had a really meh parts of the Caribbean keyblade in Cage 2 with Follow the Wind. It didn't look that great. This makes up for it so much. And then the other transform is a flag. You're fighting with a flag, dude. That's so cool. Like, it's just this cool red flag. I like it a lot. I love how tattered the flag itself is and how it's got dirt on it to keep it that rugged style of the Caribbean. And there's even a mod that changes this into various pride flags, so that's pretty cool too. Alright, from a Keyblade I love to a Keyblade I really don't like, and that's Starlight. It's very simple. And simple can be good and it can be bad, and I think this is more of the bad case. Kind of like some of Cage ones simple keyblades, which looked a little bit weak, you know? I kind of like the chunkiness that Cage 3 has. I don't think the chunkiness of the keyblades is my problem. I think it's more just some of the over-designed bits. This is simple, but kind of boring. And it just looks thin and it, I don't know, it just looks like a worse Kingdom key. It's just a star on the end, right? And, and, and yeah, and it's blue for the guard. Okay, that's great. That's that's Starlight. It goes into second form S, and it has a different finisher from the other second forms. So that's a bit more unique. It's probably the most interesting second form because of the fact it's got a different finisher. You get this late on in the game, but some people got it early because they played the classic Kingdom games that they put in Union Cross for a limited time, and you had to get certain high scores, and then you get this, and then you find out that you actually get this in the game anyway. Uh, so I feel really bad for the people who did those requirements, even before they were halved as well. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing at it, but <laughs> shot and Frodo, it's a little bit funny. <laughs> Ratatouille is my favorite Pixar movie. I love it. I think it's just a masterpiece of animation and film. Uh, but this Keyblade is pretty ugly. <laughs> now, you get this from getting five stars in the Bistro, and it makes sense what it is. It's the toque at the top, and then you've got the symbol that they use from the new restaurant at the end of Ratatouille. A set of cutlery, the Eiffel Tower, a couple of wine bottles, and then Gusteau's book at the bottom. Oh yeah, and the handle is like a corkscrew, like sort of, you, know, you uncork wine. It looks very annoying to hold, though. <laughs> like. That would do your hands in, right? I mean, you just get marks on your hands from holding that. It doesn't look very comfortable. This whole Keyblade, I think it's just like, yeah, I can see what they're trying to do, and they do do what they're trying to do, 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 ba do, ba do, do, but I don't think it's very nice to look at. It's pretty ugly, I don't really like using it. Its transform is a version of Counter Shield, but this time it's Frying Pan, although it's got a better finisher, and the Frying Pan itself looks pretty cool. I just find it kind of funny how a Frying Pan has a handle, and yet Sora's holding a different handle, because it's a shield. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, it's got two handles. And in classic tone, this keyblade you get from doing the classic Kingdom mini games. You'd have to set a specific high score, you just have to make a high score in each. So you can just go through, get a score, and then die. Now, the look of it, it's just not my style. It's obviously a classic Disney, a bit of Steamboat Willy thing going on there. I don't like the guard at all, like the cogs and everything. I mean, or oh, I'm just thinking back to Wishing Star, it's not good. The blade is a bit better, but it still looks very flimsy. Uh, and then the hand holding the trumpets, or oh, well, whatever that is, you know, one of the squeezy horns at the end. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the transforms are a bit better though. It's a copycat of Favourite Deputy with the transforms. Uh, they still look like, they've they got loads of colours. They still look very childish and that's what they're supposed to be. They're classic Disney cartoons for children. So I don't particularly like them, but uh, I guess they're a bit better. The hammer at least, I think the hammer's the most palatable one for me.
Okay, now onto another Keyblade I really, really like. It's Ultima Weapon. We've seen Ultima Weapon in the first game. It was yellow, it had one blade. We saw it in Cage 2, it was blue and it had two blades. It is also in PBS and DDD, but I haven't covered those yet. But in Cage 3, here it is, and it's got three blades, you can see that. It's going to get a little bit confusing when we get to Cage 4, isn't it? This is my favourite version of Ultima. It can be seen as potentially a bit busy with the design. There is a lot going on, a lot of spikes. But I think it looks pretty classy and it stays very consistent. It's not like there's a bunch of different elements. The elements work together well, I think. So why not everyone might like this? I really enjoy this. It's my favorite version. Not only just because of how cool it looks, it's generally just look at all these spikes and it's got silver and gray and then red and sort of sparkly effect. But red and silver or red and white, that's always a color combination that I really, I really like that. And then, yeah, you see the token is the heart once again. A little bit more special this time around, but it's the same sort of heart. You've got the elongated heart at the base of the blade as well. So a lot of the same stuff's carried over from previous games. It's kind of the most glorious looking Ultima of all of them, right? With Ultima form, Sora gets some white and black clothes that are a little bit familiar to Final Form from Cage 2. But Ultima weapon itself changes into this long sword. And it's extremely simple. It's just... A sword that's kind of prismatic, it's got all these colours flowing across it. It looks really nice. I really like this. I like the simplicity of it because it feels like the sword. It is just the sword. It's it's the ultimate sword. It's it's not like it's over the top. And you could say, well, it's the keyblade looks over the top. I know, I know, I know. But like, I think you get what I mean, right? I don't know how to explain myself completely. I just love the look of this glowing sword, which kind of feels fundamental in a way. Plus the effect has lots of other swords coming in and stuff, it's it's very cool. It's a shame Ultima doesn't really have much lore or anything about it because it's just a keychain that gets synthed, you know. Because I can just imagine some really deep lore if this was a weapon in a Dark Souls game or something. Granted it would probably look a lot less uh, pretty. Now we're getting into DLC territory and the first of these is our good friend Oathkeeper. Back again, the design is pretty much the same as Cage 2's, like it's taking all the cues from that, just making it look a bit more updated. However, there is one thing, the teeth. The teeth have changed a little bit, they've kind of got a, I don't know, a slightly fleur de ish but just a more curly tip to the ends of it. I guess it looks a bit more like a plant. I don't know, I, I don't really care for that, but it's just a very small detail. Otherwise, yeah, it's just like the Cage 2 version. Now, Oathkeeper lets you go into light form, and this doesn't change the weapon, it just changes Sora's clothes and his abilities. And its counterpart is Dark Form. It's got the kanji for light, just like the teeth on the clothes here. It's got it on the hood as well. You know, I'm not going to go into this too much because that's about clothes and I'm here to talk about weapons. But I just thought I'd show that quickly. It also has Double Form OKP as an Oathkeeper. This is the Oathkeeper version of Double Form, but they're both the same. It doesn't change which keyblades in which hand if you use Oblivion, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, why is Oblivion in the left hand for both? I don't know, it just is. Then, of course, we have the counterpart, Oblivion. Oblivion in this game, I feel like it's functionally the best, because it has a really cool transform, dark form, and you can upgrade the stats, you don't have to worry about it being weak in magic. So it's better than it was in Cage 1 and 2 in terms of mechanics and how much you can use it. It doesn't feel so useless. Unfortunately, I think the design is the weakest of the three. And one reason for that is because it's less black, it's not as dark, it's a bit more sort of greyish purple. And also, as you can probably see if you know Oblivion pretty well, on the blade has the chain running through it, but this time there's actually gaps between the chain. It's not just a chain on an actual solid metal, there's gaps between it, so it's a chain in the middle. I don't really like that. Personally, I think that makes it look a little bit weaker in design. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of that. The guard is still good and it's nice to see the gem at the center of the guard there. It's nice to see that looking quite nice and shiny and fancy. And yeah, dark form is just like light form, but uh, instead we have the kanji for darkness on his clothes and it's much more dark themed. Okay, so now we're on to the Kingdom Key copycats. I call them that not because they look like Kingdom Key, although two of them kind of do, but actually just because they go into second form and they have the same base and max stats, right? They have the plus four, plus four, plus nine, plus nine. The first of those is Daunt of Dusk. So this is obviously a star cluster recolor, 
but I... Uh, okay. This is my least favorite Keyblade in the game. It's just the colors, orange and green, are really ugly to me. They don't look good together at all. It looks really cheap, which I suppose is fitting because it's a Keyblade based on a convenience store, 7-Eleven, and it just looks really cheap. And the idea of a Keyblade that's themed around a convenience store seems like the cheapest thing ever to me. That's just, that's just kind of bad. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> you can buy it on the stores, you could get it if you pre-order on Amazon, at least in the US, not here. But it's on the Microsoft and Sony stores. It looks ugly, I don't like it at all, I think it just looks bad. Um, not everyone might agree with that, but that's opinions for you. Oh yeah, and it's got second form D, and one of the abilities is Fire Boost. And that's a bit of a theming, a trend that would go on into the next two Keyblades as well. Alright, now we go on to a pair of Star Seeker retextures. Yeah, remember Star Seeker from Cage 2? Well, it gets another life here with these two Keyblades. First up is Midnight Blue, and this is a PlayStation themed Keyblade that obviously you can only get on PlayStation. It looks nice, I like it actually. It keeps the very consistent blue and silver theme with a little gold highlight for the star there. And it's got circle and X on one side and triangle and square on the other side, of course. And I like the glittery effect of it. It's quite simple, it's Star Seeker. But I like it even more than Star Seeker, I think, to be honest. I just think it's quite nice looking. This one has Blizzard Boost and Blizzaza because it's blue, so Blizzard theme, that makes sense. And it has second form M for Midnight. Then here we have the counterpart to Midnight Blue, and that's Phantom Green. Obviously, this is the Xbox version of Star Seeker. This one, I think. It isn't quite as consistent as Midnight Blue, but I still really like it because I really love the colour of green that they've used. I like the silver blade and then the green sparkles at the end. Like I said, I'm not sure it consistently flows as well as a design as the PlayStation equivalent, and that's coming from me, someone who tends to prefer Xbox, although I'm a PC gamer. But anyway, instead of the buttons being on the guard, instead we have colours on the keychain you can see down there, red, green and blue. That's for the B button, the A button and the X button. And then we also have yellow for Y, that's just throughout the design anyway. And then this one is thunder themed, so we round out that little trio of elements. Midnight Blue is a literal shade of blue, I'm not sure there is such a thing as Phantom Green. Let me do a quick Google. Wait, no, I was wrong, there is such a thing as Phantom Green, but then there's probably all sorts of colours out there. Finally, we have Elemental Encoder, the newest Cage 3 Keyblade that there is. This is because this is the PC exclusive Keyblade you get for getting it on the Epic Game Store, which is the only place you can get Cage 3 on PC at the moment anyway. It's Epic Game Store themed because it's grey. Yeah, Epic Game Store has a grey theme, it's, it's kind of boring. But it's black and white star cluster, that's literally what it is. Like, there's nothing I can really say about it, it's a black and white star cluster. Actually, I kind of like it a bit more than Star Cluster, just because this takes away some of the weird colouring and just makes it a bit more consistent. But I still don't really like Star Cluster, I just don't like the guard. But it's better than Dawn Till Dusk, and it has a really cool ability. And with that, I think we're done. Overall, Cage 3 Keyblades. I like some of them a lot like Wheel of Fate and Ultima. Most of them I'm pretty meh on, like they're okay. Uh, there is some elements of over-design there, like I've mentioned before. Like some of KH2's worst offenders, some of these are like those. I like the chunkiness of them actually, I generally like that. It's just, especially with the Disney ones, they can be over-designed, there's a lot of elements they've tried to put in there, and I think it can muddle the design and make it just look like there's a bit too much going on sometimes. And I think also with the new Kingdom Shader, that can work well for some, like uh, Wheel of Fate again, like the wood looks really good there, and some of the metal parts of Keyblades look good. But when it comes to some of the others, I think they can look a bit plasticky. Some of them are probably supposed to look like that, like Favorite Deputy, but some others like Starlight I think look too plasticky and look a bit too cheap. So yeah, that's just how it is for Cage 3 Keyblades. But there's definitely some standouts there that I really like, and the weapon transformations, the form changes, those are really really nice. Alright, so video outro time, I guess. These always feel a bit, I don't know, self-absorbed? I've only done it twice, but I figured I'd try and get better at it. I stream with a webcam all the time, like, all my streams are with webcam. And yeah, I'm used to that, but I'm not used to this. Uh, it's quite weird. 
But uh, yeah, that's Case 3 Keyblades, a video that I've put off for months and months. In fact, I wanted to do BBS first, but the reason I didn't and chose for this instead is because I had everything available. I had mods that could help me out. I had all the Keyblades I needed. It was all just a much easier affair to do, right, than doing BBS. I don't know if I will do BBS and DDD or whatever. Even if I don't, at least I've done Cage 1, 2, 3. So I've done the main ones, I guess, main ones, but you know what I mean. You know, at least I've done three and not just two. It feels a bit more complete. Uh, but yeah, you know, Case 3 Keyblades, it was quite actually nice to do. I thought it was going to be a real undertaking, but it wasn't too bad. And as usual, let me know what your favorite Keyblades or least favorite in Cage 3 are. What do you think about the Keyblades in general in this game? What do you think about transformations and all those systems? You know, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.